A Steve Johnson production. Starring Matthew Major. Mike Plant. And Steve Johnson. Our story begins on the east coast of Scotland. There is a canoe trail that runs from coast to coast. The trail is a little shy of 70 miles. Stephen, Mike, and Matthew will be at the total mercy of Mother Nature. This is the story of our attempt of paddling the Great Glen Canoe Trail. Wait, 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 wait. We didn't just head up to Scotland. Like all good fairy tales, it started with a Zoom call. Have you got that? Yes. I've, I've got a um, a really quite sizable machete with a with a saw on the back of it. Oh. The portages are going to be hard work. You're spending, you know, a day out in the weather um, paddling. You're going to burn a lot of calories. Long story short, the team decided it would take five to seven days to battle the total distance. The route includes Nepton Staircase, the Caledonia Canal, and various locks along the way. The team have studied the map in great detail. Approximately halfway down the trail, there is a real campsite where the team can stay and, if necessary, pick up supplies. For most of the time, the team will need to wild camp. Captain Mike will be in charge of navigation after all. He is the most experienced member of the group. The team would be responsible for carrying all their own water food and camping equipment. It was not clear how the boats would perform with such heavy payloads. Therefore, the team decided to schedule a training session in the majestic beauty of the Lake District with support from their friend, Chris Judge. Right, it's minus one. We're bunkered down in the Lake District in our little tent. It's me and Mr. Major. Say hello, Mr. Major. Say again. Say hello. Oh, hello, video. And uh, thank you really so much for hot water bottle, like mega. <laughs> I would not have been sitting out in one degree enjoying drinking beer with the boys without that hot water bottle shoved right up my coat. It was <laughs> epic. I am so snuggly. Look how snuggly I look. Matt is literally a cocoon. <laughs> right, over and out. Right, Matt Major. We're on our trial and testing expedition. What's your summary of the uh, of the day so far? Well, it's been a lovely day. I have trialled going upside down, and I can confirm that the water is chilly. What's it like breathing upside down? <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you get your head back up, it's still difficult to get your breath in that water. Uh, that is cold water. Any regrets on the shorts? No, I'm happy with the shorts. The lower half of my legs are dry completely Excellent. and my neoprene shorts are keeping the tops of my legs nice and warm. Any comments on our training facility? It's an amazing training facility and um, it's basically free, Excellent. so that's great. Mike Plant, what's your summary of our training exercise? Happy with all your stuff? Yeah, yeah. Kit yeah. working okay? Yeah. Anything yeah. you would like to change about your setup for Scotland? Matt. Teammates. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Steve. <laughs> yeah, I swap Matt and Steve. The two idiots, two people that are not idiots and know what they're doing. <clears throat> Happy days. Yeah. You can't see where you're going and he can't stay the right way up. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what a team.
Come on, Great Glen Challenge. The team had done all they could. It was time to begin. <laughs> things called drumlins which are egg-shaped bits of land which are made by the tail end of glaciers as they lose their energy to carry all the material they start depositing material on the ground and then the glacier still continues but really slowly over the top of them so you get egg-shaped little lumps pointing in the direction of the ice flow and they're called drumlins we've got drumlins to the left drumlins to the left Pan down to the left and you can see drumlins. You got it. So it's Sunday morning, the morning of the day one of the Great Glen Canoe Trail. We stayed here last night in the Jory's Inn. Um, reasonable night in the hotel, nice big meal. A full cup breakfast this morning and uh, we're about to go meet our transport so we've got our van here with the boats and the guys are just getting kitted up we're going to meet the transport swap them boats from our van onto the transport along with all our kit and then they're going to drive us all the way over to fort william which is the start of the canoe trail and then we will take around four or five days paddling across scotland to get back here in inverness Right, speak to you all later. Right, it's two o'clock, day one, top of Neptune staircase. We are about to set off. We're a bit behind schedule, but the weather's awesome and we've got a tailwind, so we should be happy days. Aiming for 10K down to the first camping spot. The guys are just suiting up. Probably about an hour away from our first area where we're looking to wild camp so we'll have to start looking for somewhere to pitch up and get some tents up and get some food on the go matt's the head chef over there so he'll be cooking us up some tea what are we have for tea tonight matt for this video Excellent. We've got cheese. Excellent. Strong cheddar cheese. And some gin and tonics. We've got gin and tonics. <laughs> Breakfast, we've got smoked gammon and Cumberland sausage. Excellent. Can't Right, 5 p.m., we've just got off the water. We are at the end of the first leg near this lock. So we've done what? We've done Captain Mike, about 10K ish. 10K to in. And uh, I think we've got Ben Nevis behind us over there somewhere. In the distance. Nevis. And then this is our first portage. So we've got all the boats loaded up here on our wheels. And we've got to walk up this hill. But we'll hopefully get some footage and show you where we're spending our first night after a bit of a bit of a walk. So, excellent first day. Weather was beautiful coming down, wasn't it, lads? Oh, yeah. Sunshine on our backs, nice little breeze. Absolutely fantastic. Anything to add, Major? 
No. <laughs> that was all lovely. Excellent. We managed to find some nice level ground to pitch our tents and it was sheltered by some huge trees which we hoped would give us some protection from the weather. As it happened, it was a really calm, still evening. It was a stunning place to camp, really, really peaceful. It was a little bit of a pain because we had to cross the lock gates with all our gear, so we left our canoes on the other side of the water, ferried all our gear back into across the lock gates. But once we got the tents up, got a fire going, got some food on the go, and then we just spent the evening sitting around, eating, drinking, relaxing, and reflecting on the day's events. Right, we're camped up over there, just off the side of the canal. And if you come across this lock gates here, there is actually toilets and some washing facilities that you can use, which is mega. Yeah. And Matt's just found out there's also some free Wi-Fi. There is. So we're happy with that. Free Highland Wi-Fi. So I've just been over, washed my plate in there, which is excellent. And um, just now looking back around on the locks, you've got your main lock here down, down the canal. And then you've got the lock gates here, which we had to portage across. And then we had to leave our boats on that side, walk across the lock gates, because you're not allowed to camp anywhere along this part, but you are allowed to wild camp on that side. So we've set up camp over there somewhere underneath them trees. So it's nice and sheltered, we've had our tea. And then we've just come to wash up, because it's uh, starting to go dark. But really impressed with our first stop. Facilities on the Great Drinking New Trail, so far, thumbs up, absolutely fantastic. And this canal, what have you thought of the uh, Caledonia Canal, Matt? Uh, absolutely stunning, just absolutely beautiful canal. Did it feel like a canal, did it? It was more like a nice no, wide river. it felt like a big wide river, especially the left-hand bank, because that was like more natural. The right-hand bank looked more man-made. And then you've got views over to Ben Nevis, views of all this big scenery as you're paddling. Um, Really beautiful, really nice. Loved it. And we're in perfect conditions. We're never going to get uh, conditions like that probably on the rest of the trip. So we've done our best to enjoy the really good conditions. And we're forecasting rain for tomorrow, aren't we? Rain and gusts over 30 miles an hour. So that is going to be interesting. <laughs> Safety first. Hi everyone, right, we'll just stop for some lunch. It is still lashing down. It has not let up all day. Here's the boys just getting suited up, ready to get back out onto the water. And then um, just so we could have a space to cook, we just threw up this tarp. Just to give you an idea of how we've been surviving in this bloody rain. So we've been in here nestle down on these pebbles just enough to stay out the rain we had a bit of a fire going over there where we boiled the kettle and cooked um, cooked some noodles <clears throat> we had some noodles we had some brews some hot chocolates that sort of stuff and uh, we're basically ready now to get back out and get on it now we've warmed up a bit morale's back up you alright Matt? I really need a leak oh yeah Thank you. <laughs> Boom. Pearl, Little Miss Sunshine and Duchess 
Just having a little break in this beauty spot. Major, what do you think a lot lucky? A beautiful place. <laughs> it certainly is. Even though it's raining, we've really, really enjoyed this leg of the paddle. It has been absolutely stunning. If anything, the rain is actually enhancing our experience. I think it's beautiful. Well wrapped up, got my cag on, waterproof pants. I'm nice and warm, nice and dry, and it is literally not stopped raining for the last 12 hours, but we're having an absolute ball. I've got some work to do now because the lads have uh, jetted off all the way down there. Jesus. All right, I'll speak to you all in a bit. All right, it's half past six in the evening. We've just got off the water. We found a nice place to camp, finally. It's actually stopped raining as well, which is nice but it has been raining all day. So this is the location where we'll be camping tonight. It's actually a really nice spot. Really, really beautiful. Look at that. We're up in them trees there, just over my shoulder. Matt and Mike are just setting up a tarpaulin as a bit of a shelter. So we can dry off for a bit before we attempt to put the tents up and get a hot drink on the go. Whew. Tough day today. Raining all day, but really enjoyable. Probably my favourite paddle so far. It was absolute lock, 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 locky is absolutely stunning. Just class, absolutely class. So Mike and I have pitched literally on the t on the beach. Matt's just a bit further back in the trees. There's a little tarp that we set up for shelter. cracking little camping spots, you open your doors in the morning and you're just looking straight out to that. This is fantastic. Really, really nice. Beautiful lock. We've got the boats, the Duchess over there. Little Miss Sunshine, the red one. And the... Uh, the infamous Blue Pearl, my inflatable kayak. And a pretty sizable beach. Loads of people could camp on here. It definitely wasn't an evening to sit outside around the campfire and relax. Luckily, Matt had hex burners and Mike and I had jet boilers, so we were able to cook food in our tents and at least get something to eat. Hi everyone, right, day three. We decided to make a call this morning and take a rest day. Um, it was really bad yesterday. Everyone was soaking through. Last night, struggled to get a fire going. Everything was soaking, put our tents up in the rain and then we got battered all night. So. We were checking this morning, there was, a, there was white caps on some of the waves. There's quite a big swell coming in from that wind last night. And um, yeah, it looked pretty sketchy this morning. So we thought, you know what? While I've got such a beautiful spot to camp, let's just sit the day out, recover, try and dry some kit out, and then we'll crack on tomorrow. Even though it, this is just a lock, it's still got a um, fair bit of waves, even at the edge and in the middle. Um, it's even worse, it's really, really choppy. Um, and it was forecasted to be pretty dodgy for paddling. It's Captain Mike. How's it going? All right, yeah. Feeling any better? Bit better, yeah. How's the headache? All right, on its way. Got some food on, got a brew on. Oh, lovely. Yeah. 
What a great spot to pick for a rest day, eh? Alright. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Right, still looks a bit bouncy up there. Yeah, we'll be getting nailed in the middle, won't we? So right, you found one? So yeah. Got target found, tree? Found a target tree. It stood up. Yep. It's not rotten. It's got some moss on it, but I reckon when we cut into the middle of that, that could be dry. And that could give us a fire to t for tonight. Oh. I reckon we've got a 15 to 20% chance of having a cracking fire out of it. What tools do we need? So we need the machete. Yep. The big killer machete. And the handsaw. And I reckon we've got to go. Check this out. This is a little cabin in the woods that the boys have found. What are you saying, Major? I'm saying I'm going to cook some lamb up. Are you going to be around for some hot food? Yes, definitely going to be around for some hot food. Right, perfect. Hot lamb? Hot lamb, and we're having it in a wrap with some fiery tomato sauce. Oh, yes. Yes. Anything I can show on film? Yes, it's when we've got um, mm. what looks like some dog food in there but that is the lamb burgers all broken up ready to cook oh you smashed them up right nice and we have the nans all separating all showing on here which is in your thing and the little cooker down here is about to get sparked up if you move down a bit you'll see the little cooker excellent i will spark up do it do it will spark up live on blog sparking up in one in one no oh. in two. two in three three <laughs> four Most I've ever done. <laughs> it's going. I've been rustling this up on the fire. Oh, it looks amazing though. What, what is it, Mike? Uh, traditional bannock. Food of the voyagers. <laughs> voyagers. And uh, what, was the, what was the mixture you've used? Uh, flour, um, milk powder, baking powder, uh, some mixed fruit, cinnamon, and some sugar. And you've just had it on the open fire for the last, what, I don't know, 10 minutes, if that? Yeah, something like that. Got going on here then? So, we have some rice courtesy of Uncle Ben. <laughs> Good on him. That's ready. I need to take that off the fire. And then we have some smoked gammon joints here. And then we have some cheese to put over the top and some paprika. And we have some bag of nice herby stuff to go into the rice. So we're going to have herby rice, smoked gammon, with cheese and paprika. Final thoughts on the day, boys, while we're sat around the beautiful campfire. It's been really good. Yeah, it's been uh, a lot better than what we expected, wasn't it? Yeah. Most foraging for wood in a day, <laughs> hence the massive remnants of the fire that was five levels earlier. <laughs> it's actually been a really enjoyable day while camping, hasn't it? Yes, we've had homemade bread. And um, we're feeling rehydrated, refueled, and very well rested, ready to take on tomorrow. Good morning, day four, this time from inside my little tent. So, first of all, look at this for view when you wake up in the morning. And the uh, horrendous noise you could hear is my little uh, jet boiler. So I'm just cooking up some um, porridge and then we're going to have uh, a quick set up hopefully and get on that water as soon as we can as conditions look great and um, I'll update you in a bit, over and out. We knew once we left the shelter and protection of this little cove 
we would be exposed to the full wrath of this lock. Forecast was clear for the morning, but strong winds were expected in the afternoon. So Captain Mike plotted a course to two potential camping spots, and we knew we had to hustle to reach one of those spots before the winds picked up in the afternoon. Right, we've hit a problem. Shop's really, really bad. We're really struggling, especially Matt in the sea kayak. There's nowhere really to stop. So we're rafting up to try and save ourselves, save ourselves to get to some kind of evac point. It's a campsite about well, seven kilometres away from here. I'm hoping to get out there unless we see somewhere safer to set it out. But the chop is absolutely killing us. We've got breakers right in the middle. It's tipped Matt out of his boat. So we've done a rescue and now we're after up. Right folks, this is not going well at all. We've just had a few scary moments. Matt's gone in again. Steve rescuing Matt's boat after Matt's capsized in the chop. It's a bit, pretty big swell out there. Um I've had to rescue his boat to manage to get we blew off. And then Mike tried to get his paddle. It went off about 20 meters. We didn't think we could get it back. This time I managed to paddle into the middle over there and get the paddle. We're now marooned on this bit of land and uh, we need a we need an evac. So Matt's on the phone at the moment to the uh, one of the kayak companies to see if they can send a vehicle. Some of these waves are absolutely ridiculous. Me being an inflatable boat, boat is actually fine because it's just bending and just soaking them up. Matt just can't get anywhere. Every time he hits one of these broadsides. As soon as he hits him, he just tips him over. We built a raft that was working fine for the two two canoes, but he can't get the sea kayak in the middle, so Matt was tied to the rear and he just flipped him. So total disaster. Um, and we can't risk him going in for a third time. He's already pretty shook up. He's freezing cold. We've given him a hot look at this. We followed our rescue protocols. We've given him a hot drink, We're trying to warm him up. He's had a bit of a wander. Um, so we're all safe, we're all accounted for, we're all relatively happy, we're starting to see the funny side, now we're on land and uh, we're just trying to sort out an evac, hopefully one of these companies can come and get us. With steep mountain sides and nowhere to camp, the team needed extraction. Unfortunately, the nearest road is on the opposite side of the lock. Crossing the lock in these conditions will not be possible. According to the maps, there is a hiking trail just above the tree line. But climbing up to it will not be easy, especially with Matt's boat. Right, we've made it to safety, more or less. We've just got to get up the steep embankment, which we're uh, currently working on at the moment. We're roping up Matt's boat so we can drag it up this very steep, like, cliff face and uh, climb it up onto this track. Even with two of us at the top pulling the ropes and Matt underneath taking some of the weight, Matt's kayak was still super heavy when dragged vertically through the trees. Right, Mike and I have got back out on the water. We've got Matt to safety. He's pulling his boat along the path up there. Me and Mike have crossed the rough stuff and we've got to calm the waters. Look at that, there's Mike. And there is a campsite around this corner. Matt's on the radio, so we've been walking, talking him as he's been tracking us along the side. And somehow down here, we're gonna to have to get a hint Matt and his boat across. And we've reached safety. What a mission that was. There's definitely no monster in Loch Ness, but there's one in Loch Locky. Oh my days. We got our ass handed to us today, big time. Nearly killed Matt at least three times. But we stood together, we followed all our all our processes and uh, we got out of there. It was really sketchy at one point, I just didn't know what we were gonna do. Um, and um, we ended up finding a little track which Matt is now dragging his boat along on the wheels. So luckily we had all the kit and all the equipment. We've tried to get an evac and uh, there isn't one until nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So, but at least we can find somewhere to sleep tonight, get the campsite. Um, or even get to a road. Maybe we'll do that and try and get a taxi or a bus back to where the van is in Inverness and then come with our own van. Just send one person out and we just can pitch a camp and see where we get to. But uh, it's actually been a really amazing day. I've really enjoyed it. Apart from Matt nearly dying, um, it was really, really awesome. 
And I was the one that rescued the paddle. I paddled after Matt's paddle. I couldn't see it. Mike was on the bank shouting at me, directing me. Best extreme guiding ever. And I managed to get Matt's 22 year old paddle out of the water in my boat and get back to safety. Um, so that was good. And we got his boat back. So we got his boat, got his paddle, we got Matt. And um, yeah, that's that. Steve and Mike are making the most of the shelter and protection of this bay as they wait for Matthew. Matthew had gained quite a lot of altitude and had a really good vantage point of the whole area. So using his radio, he guided the team to the perfect rendezvous point where they could meet up and discuss the next steps. After varying degrees of success, Matt's changed boats. He's got this one now. Yes. Welcome aboard, Jack. Massive, massive boat coming through the locks. Pretty awesome. The lock keeper said we were fine to camp on the small boat. So, Rush was on to try and get the tents up. It's actually a really good spot to camp. We're at a lock, so there's a toilet and a shower over there, which is awesome. It's not really a campsite. And um, there's a converted canal boat and a mini restaurant, so that's awesome and really well needed. It was time for the team to make a decision. Clean, warm, and dry, the team contemplate their fate. Quit now before the storm hits or endure some of the worst weather known to man. Very strong wind and lots of rain forecast for the next three days, so we decided to end the trip here. It wasn't all doom and gloom, we had a cracking night's sleep. And a lion while we waited for Matt to go and get the van. We also had the Mag 7 burger in a local cafe and got to visit the Well of the Seven Heads. Right, we're in the Well of the Seven Heads. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as there was a slight break in the weather, it was back to camp to pack up as quickly as possible and get on the road home. Just heard sirens and loads of commotion going on and a rescue. No, I thought just been down the lot, so I got a bad feeling so someone might be some serious trouble. Right boys, we came, we saw, and we got conquered. <laughs> We are out of here, full self-evacuation, three lemmings on the side of a lock. There's no way we're going out there. And if anyone else going out there, Jesus Christ, you know, God have mercy on their soul. It is not worth carrying on. We're, we're abandoning it. It's just been crazy. Rescue helicopters. <laughs> Rescue helicopters have been out looking for people. It's, it's just catastrophic. Mike, any final thoughts on the trip? It's been pretty good. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Very well. Are you glad we're terminating a day early? Oh yeah. 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 Matt? Matt, any reflections on your uh, life-changing experience yesterday? Um, Can you talk about it? Yeah. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, all valuable experiences, lots of lessons, and um, we made it to have the magnificent seven. So seven. Well, of seven. Well, of seven. So, well. Last vlog everybody, that is it from Team Great Glen, over and...